What's up guys, we're back here at Waycon. The undisclosed cab is finally finished. It's already painted, good to go. We're taking it home today and we can't wait to show you more of it. Last time we were here at Wacon, the cab was just primered, pretty bare, no windows, no nothing. And us, along with the customer, we decided to make some changes for visibility. We want a bit more visibility down here for the driver to see any pedestrians or anything approaching the vehicle from the side. But the problem is with a traditional up and down sliding glass window, the mechanism would block this entire space so you lose all that visibility. So we decided to switch to this sliding style window, which is pretty sweet. And now it's all in and you can see the visibility here is absolutely huge and it's going to be no problem to see anything approaching from the left or right of the vehicle. In the last video we had a bunch of comments about the dozer style door. The hinge is actually at the front. A lot of people concerned it would be back here and would swing open when the driver's driving the truck. We thought the same thing so we put the hinge up here but with the dozer door out front we still have really great access here. Um, instead of it being on the side where you'd have to sort of climb over the passenger seat if you're trying to get on this side and it would have removed some space for our HVAC components and center console that we have over there. Now sitting inside the cab, I can see how much of a difference that small change made to the visibility in here. It's pretty incredible. Let me show you around. So as you can see here, my side visibility has improved dramatically. I can see pedestrians or another car next to the truck and then in here, you can see out front, tons of visibility. Here you see that sliding window on the side over there. Up here, the console's all fully in. So we're gonna have our screens and radio up here. So it's out of the way of the driver's main visibility, but still super easy to reach. Over the side, the all important cup holders. Saw a bunch of comments about that. We got three of them right here for you. Little tray over there. And then the HVAC unit is actually gonna go down in here. Behind me, is our electronics panel so pretty easy to remove but we have these locking connectors down here and all the electronics will be visible but safely separated from the driver i'm super happy with how this has turned out and can't wait to see it on the road and show you guys more Looking pretty close. All right, so we just finished loading up the trailer behind me. We're ready to head off for Golden. Um, got a much better tarp on it now, so we shouldn't have nearly as many problems as we did coming over from Penticton. But we got a five hour drive ahead of us through the mountain. The old 6.0 is ready to go. For any of you who know the 6.0, they know how sketchy that's gonna be. But fingers crossed we're gonna make it and we're gonna take you along with us, show you it making its final trip to Golden, where it'll eventually go on the chassis and finally see it driving around. We're about to hit the road. We got Jacob driving the F550 over here. I'm gonna be driving Chase's old Jeep, which we're moving to Golden to use as a runaround. It'll be perfect for the property. Only caveat, no roof. And we are 
two hours late from when we were supposed to leave. So it's going to be a bit of a chilly drive, um, but it should be a beautiful one. Can't complain out here. BC mountains are beautiful. As it turns out, it takes more than four engineers to wrap a trailer. Just making some quick adjustments here. Apologize to all the preppers who are probably cringing at our wrapping job, but uh, it's an all hands on deck team here, so we're trying to learn. Already is just past. 2 a.m., but we have made it safe and sound here in Golden. I'm still defrosting a little bit from that Jeep ride, but the cab is here, safe and sound. Today, I'm going to talk about a problem which I'm sure many of you who work on and fix your own stuff are going to be super familiar with. We've all seen the complaints all over the internet, engineers making impossible stuff to work on, and the problem seems to only be getting worse. Even some of the bolts here on top seem to drive me absolutely insane. And this was a truck built by mechanics for mechanics. And just goes to show you how even with the best intentions, this can be a really hard problem to solve. Now, five or 10 years down the road, I don't want to be ruining any mechanics day with the mistake that I make today. So we're trying to develop some internal tools that we can use to ensure that our trucks are the most serviceable on the road. As we've talked about before, Onshape is a cloud-based CAD software, and that allows for awesome collaboration here at Edison between the engineers, but also allows us to publicly share documents. And that was the idea behind Clearance Check. I wanted to make something that we could use here at Edison to improve our CAD, but also share with the community all you have to do is go into the link in the description, copy the document, save it somewhere on your Onshape, which by the way, Onshape is free for non-commercial use. So anyone can sign up with the link in the description and start playing around in Onshape for free. So here's the basic document. You get to pick your different drive size. So quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, three quarter, um, whether or not you want a deep socket or a shallow socket. Um, and then obviously the head size or the bolt size, I put both in just to make it easier. Um, if you want an extension or not, so I'm gonna pick a three inch extension here. And then finally your ratchet. A uh, couple different types of ratchet, hinged, short, long. I'm gonna go with a three eighths long. And there you go. You can see easy as that. We have a usable file um, to check our clearance on. And then I'll show you how that actually works in practice in an assembly. So all I have to do is hit insert. I find where I've stored my clearance check document, go to assemblies, and then the same as I just did, you pick all your options. So I know it's an M20 bolt. I want a five inch extension and I want a long ratchet. I just hit generate, grab it here, drag it over. Boom, there we go. All I have to do is put a little mate, a little revolute so I can spin it around and boom, there we go. I can see now that uh, mechanics gonna have enough space. It's a little tight, but uh, not bad. So that's how easy it is to use this tool, which is exactly what I wanted. So there's no excuses to not check for clearance and heard a mechanics day later down the road. So thank you Onshape for allowing us to create a tool like this and share it with the community. Right now it only has metric sockets. That's what we use here at Edison. Um, but I'd love to add imperial sockets. I'd love to add wrenches, even impacts. Three scan some of the impacts here, throw that in the tool. There is so much more we can do with this and this is just a start, but I'd love everyone to check it out. Leave some feedback in the comments.
The undisclosed truck company, their chassis isn't here yet. It's still about a month away before we can get out of merit and get it here. So there's no point in unwrapping it yet and getting all the dust on it. So we'll unveil it in a month when the next truck is here. The next step is to get the undisclosed truck chassis with the lift axle. We're gonna have to get that here, put it in the shop. We're just cleaning out the shop tying it up, giving it a paint job, making it look a little bit nicer. Then we're gonna get the toolboxes, get the toolboxes. There's no point in bringing the chassis in and then working the toolboxes around it. Let's get the toolboxes, get everything else up here, put into the shop. And from there, then we'll be able to then take this into the next bay, use the overhead crane to the next bay to then bring it on, set it onto the truck cab. And that'll be a cool moment. But at least it's here. Heart rate should be able to settle down now. That was super stressful because I've been working on this cab for about a year now and there's only one of them. It's right here. So moving it on an excavator like that a little bit, a little bit raises the heart rate, but I'm glad it's on the ground, safe and sound and uh, ready to get installed over the next hopefully month or two. Get it on the chassis, get this thing out here, testing on the test track we're going to be building over the next few weeks. So it's all very exciting as we're putting things together here in Donald. Obviously these lifting points did their job, made it actually super easy to move it around and they'll come in handy again when we're trying to put it on top of the chassis in a couple months here. But yeah, I absolutely killed it with the excavator and uh, it was beautiful. Couldn't have gone any better, no hiccups, so I will be able to breathe tonight.